My name is Tuomas Rinta. I work for a company called Amplifier. And um, it was actually interesting to hear Wilhelm talk about paid user acquisition because what I'm talking about here today is actually more about the earned media. So the topic of this uh, slide set is authentic virality. You share if you care. And uh, to start off, yes, uh, the presentation is actually already available on the internet. There will be a lot of data in this presentation. It's a very data heavy presentation. So uh, no need to take photos of the slides, no need to take notes. I suggest uh, just listen and download the slide set later. So uh, what I'm talking about here today is data from two, two surveys. Uh, one we did ourselves in March, and the other source we're using is a company called EDAR. They are a entertainment and games research company in the United, United States, and they did a survey in Q2. And what we wanted to dig down into is how does virality work in games these days? Uh, while all of this doesn't apply directly to mobile games, we do have a very mobile focus on it. But remember that the findings here will also apply to games outside of the mobile space. So, uh, the other interesting thing was uh, in Wilhelm's sl slides was, how did you find about new games? And, well, not surprisingly, the research we have on our hands points to the same thing. Word of mouth is king. And social media is king. It's other people telling you what to play. The App Store is also high. high. What we're seeing uh, over 100% bars is that these, the respondents have the possibility of picking multiple, multiple options. So then there's, of course, we have the paid marketing, which unfortunately is not as effective. As we can see here, it's only half of about word of mouth, actually even less. But from looking at the breakdown, we can see that 72% people said that word of mouth has caused them to download a game or seeing another person coming in very close. And the same result as in Wilhelm's slide set featured apps in the storefront or the top charts in the storefront. Nothing to be scoffed at. It is a very important place for visibility, but getting there, we all know it's next to impossible these days. Facebook is extremely important as well. Ads coming in at about 40%, and then different things like mobile game discovery, uh, video services, text messaging. And the interesting thing to know is that Twitter is at the end of the spectrum. It's actually a really good question why. I'll come back to that a little later. So, but what about word of mouth? How does it really work? So, uh, there's two things we look at. How does word of mouth work in person? It's, hey, I have this game, you have to get it. That's the best way of doing word of mouth. Your friend's showing it to you. You will most likely download the game. Or you see them play, watching over their shoulder, watching somebody play Candy Crush Saga on the bus. And if you look around, look around in the bus, going to your work or school or whatever, you will see a lot of people playing Candy Crush Saga. And there's the combination kind of these two is the Facebook post. It happens online, but these are people you know in person. So it's in kind of blending the lines of in-person and online. Then there's fan videos and shared screenshots, which are only online methods of discovering new games. But the, op the opportunity is how do we help word of mouth? How do we make it better? How do we give better access to it? How do we make virality happen? So it's, it all comes down to sharing. Why do you want to share about your about the game you're playing, why do you want to tell your friends? So to figure that out, we have to go into which of the features are important while playing. 
because sharing is not all only about doing a Facebook post. It's not about sending a game invite or doing a video recording of your game. It's about sharing the gaming experience with your friends. It's playing at the same time, inviting your friends, playing with others, sharing tips, achievements, screenshots. These are all elements that are viral growth. These are things users want to do that have them involve other people. And the interesting thing here, it's actually better in the previous slide, is playing with real friends is double the importance to playing with non-friends. You want to pay, play with people you know, not with some random person from Asia or the United States. You want to play with the guy that the next time you meet him, you can say, I kicked your ass. So, if we look at this, we can put this to two categories. It's playing together and sharing. And what playing together is, it's viral growth through things like invites or requests. I mean, a lot of us have seen using Candy Crush Saga as an example again. There are 27 Candy Crush Saga invites available for you. These are playing together methods of free-to-play games. Sharing, it's viral growth through shared content, gameplay videos, achievements, uh, pictures from the game, whatnot. But uh, let's first look at playing together and what, what does it mean for viral growth. So coming back to this, people want to play with their friends, real friends. Of course, playing with non-friends is still important, but there's a great emphasis on the real friends. And easy access to get these friends is also extremely important. But the interesting thing is that even though that people want to play with their real friends, over 60% want to have a nickname instead of their real identity in the game. So, uh, with 43% saying nickname or avatar, and even 17% saying no identity, even if my friends can't find me. So it's actually an interesting contradiction between, okay, I want to play with my friends, but I don't want to be me. Games are a way for us to escape reality. When you're on the bus, you don't want to think about the person sitting next to you or the job you're going to. You want to be inside the game world. And there, who you are as a real person is not actually important. So. This is extremely important when you think about how the user connects to their friends. While there's your real identity and your friends are on Facebook, you can bring them, but they don't want to bring their identity, their name, or their photo to the game. They'd rather have something else. So if we look at approaches, for example, on PlayStation Network, on the new, uh, on the new one, what we see is a combination of these. You can have your avatar or you can have your real identity. On Xbox, you only have your avatar, you have your gamer tag. This is a representation of you inside the games. So, but for most people, there's always the gaming identity. It's not really you. But what it also means is that these people don't really use the game services, the identity providers. So, there's, a, again, an issue. Uh, the funny thing is, if you want to pick the best identity provider or the best social gaming platform, you'd think it'd be the one on the left side. But the biggest response was, I don't even know any. So, of course, the next one, we have Game Center, but then when we get to companies like Playphone or the none, now already, rest in peace, open faint, Papaya, Mobile, Score Loop, we are seeing at maximum 18% recognition even there. And if we talk about adaptation, it's going to be even lower. So, where are the real friends of the people? They're in your contacts. These are the real friends. And not a very many games use these contacts. But if you look at social services on the, on the App Store, 
pretty much everybody wants to upload your, upload your contacts. Of course, with the contacts, there's always the privacy issue. If someone remembers a uh, social service like Path, uploading the contacts uh, kind of ac accidentally to their servers, and there's a lot of backlash because these are the real contacts you have, these are the real friends, these are real identities, but these are, this is the access to the, to the actual friends you have. But again, we come back to the identity crisis. I don't want to be me. I want to be my gamer tag. I want to be my gamer identity. So how do we combine, with, combine that? That's a really good question, and it depends on the game. So the other way to get into best to get into the user's friends is through Facebook. Now, what we're seeing actually is that you can't force Facebook login. One of the reasons is that asking for a Facebook login, most of the times users consider it to be a bit iffy. Now here's the thing, when I go to a game or a new website that says login with Facebook, my first instinct is this application wants to spam me. If I log in, it's going to post on my wall that Tuoma started using this application. Uh, now, this can have really bad effects. Um, there's an interesting story a while back when we used to run more Facebook applications and I was trying out different, different things, different applications applying to our network and one of them was a dating application. Now being the sometimes naive person I am, I used my real account to test it out and two days later, I found that I have a post in my wall saying, hey, Thomas tried this dating application to find women in his area. Well, it didn't go down very well with my wife. So uh, after that, I have had this inherent distrust of what is this application going to do with my identity? Because I, uh, this gives them access to my identity. So you have to show it's fun first. If I know it's fun, I've learned to trust the game, I have a relationship, it's meaningful to me, I will much easier connect Facebook because I get to the point I realize I care about this. I want to share this with my friends. I will use it, especially if I get something in return. It's a bit questionable. It's like, will you sell me your identity? Well, yes, <laughs> I might, if you're really, really good. And if you'll never spam me. So uh, what we have actually noticed is it's a good idea next to the Facebook login to say, we will never spam your account. Of course, if you say that, better make sure you never spam that, ag that account. But the most important thing we think is actually the sharing. Well, viral growth to, through shared content. So. In the response to our survey, 10 to 20% rank sharing extremely, extremely important. So it's these guys. Sharing screenshots, sharing video replays, even broadcasting my game. So this means I want others to see what I'm doing right now. If you think that's odd, check out Twitch. If you haven't already heard about Twitch, uh, do it now because this will show you how much people want to show what I'm doing right now. And these are actually the people you want, sharing actual experiences from their game. Now, what do they wanna share? The top, tell friends about the game verbally. Again, it's like, check this out. I love this game. Okay, now that's a little diff difficult one because uh, the amount of people you generally are connected to, so you see them face to face, is limited. And there's not a, not a lot you can do to help that out. I mean, you can't incentivize, say, okay, you'll get 20 coins if you show this your, to your friend. That doesn't happen. So then there's reviewing, inviting, but this is what we're interested in. So uh, it's at the last point of this chart. But the question is, uh, why are we interested? It's still 22%. 22% of players in a game want to share a video. If that doesn't sound like a lot, 
Think about a game that has 100,000 players. 20,000 people in that game want to share a video of that game. That's actually a lot of videos. And now, why should you be interested in those people that share? Because they are your best users. In the studies, we found that those that share, actually, they download more games and they play a lot more. In the second chart, we can see that the sharers spend a lot more time in the game and they play a lot, a lot more games. And the really, really interesting stuff comes here. The sharers are actually your whales. The heavy sharing video segment is your biggest paying segment as well. If we compare to the whole demographic, we can see about 5% being heavy payer and 25% heavy payer in the heavy, heavy video sharing segment. So, Wilhelm talked about, your, uh, about the whales. So, these guys are your whales. These are the ones you want to go after. So, if we look at the sharers, what do they want to do? Uh, the green bar being the heavy payers and the blue bar, bar being the non-payers. There's a huge difference between the sharing activities for these users. Uh, we are seeing discussion on the forums like 10 times more. Being more prone to give a star rating to the game, writing a review, inviting friends. Why is it? Because people who share, they share because they care. And if they care, they're more prone to do things around your game, share gameplay, invite friends. So sharers are your most valuable users by far. They play more, they pay more, and they spread the word. So what do they want to do? The common point question is, okay, what do you want to share? You want to show off that you're better. It's actually not true. The biggest reason is to let other people know, I enjoyed this game. I liked it. It does good stuff for me. And the next the biggest reason is, okay, I share, I like it so much, I want my friends in on, in on this as well. I want to play with my friends. And only after that we get the skill factor. Before the survey went out, I would have said the third one to show off my skill would be the most important reason. It's like, ah, ha, ha, I beat your score. But it's actually not true. You want to share because you care. And because of that, you want your friends to care. Because shared caring is better. So if we again compare the non-payers, uh, uh, non-sharers to the heavy video sharers or heavy sharers, we can see that in this segment, it's even more important. If you share, it's more about your enjoyment and it's more important and pronounced in this segment. And it's about the friends. For the Full segment, we can see there's not much of a difference, but those who share, it is more pronounced. And those who share, they are more social. When asked, okay, what are the important features while you're playing? We can see that the who said sharing is extremely important, want more. They want more features, they want achievements, they want chatting, they want to enjoy the shared content. So they want to see what others shared as well. If I enjoyed this, how did others enjoy it as well? They want to see access to social networks and everything social. And again, playing with real friends, inviting them, sharing. It's all more pronounced. So sharers, they are the retaining users and they want community because community builds retention. I care about this game, 
and I want to connect to the other people who care about this game so we can share our experiences. Another interesting thing was that these sharers are more prone to find new applications through word of mouth, through social media. So we can see a pronounced difference between the word of mouth compared to the difference in the App Store. Uh, for how they found new apps through the App Store is pretty much the same, but on the word of mouth it's pronounced because this is the medium that they want. They want to share to social media, so they're more, more prone to the influence of social media in their consuming actions. So, we talked about this. How do we go from the in-person to online? It's the sharers. These people are putting the word out about your game. So, uh, here we can see that those who share actually care less than the control group about hearing from a family or a friend and care more about the online shared content. If it's on Facebook, Twitter, shared screenshot, fan videos, this is more important to them since for them the sharing is online. Again, the Facebook post by a friend, video service, another social network being high vehicles for distribution of this shared content. So, what has it come down to? Uh, we talk about virality, and what virality is, I mean, it comes down to a loop. If we get viral distribution, how does this exponentially grow my game or keep the growth going? So, we grab the sh sharers in social media, we get them to try a new game, they engage with the game, they turn out loving it, and they become the sharers of that game as well. So it is the golden loop that helps the sharers keep your user base going and growing. So what type of sharing is most influential? How do we tell the story from the game properly? How do we get this, check this out, to go online? So, surprisingly enough, the answer is video. So, uh, has anybody here played Nimble Quest? Few people. Uh, so, Nimble Quest is a, a game by Nimblebit. Um, it's like Snake, but you fight monsters. It's like an RPG version of the original Nokia Snake. Uh, made by the awesome guys at Nimblebit, also known for uh, planes and tiny towers and pocket planes and tiny towers and games like that you might have run across. So, this is actually actual